Welcome to Talking Beat, the podcast for the Portland Police Bureau. We're focusing on thoughtful conversations that we hope will inform and provide you with a small glimpse of work performed by Portland police officers, as well as issues affecting public safety in our city. Here's what's on today's show. I want the community to know that we are currently taking all calls for service. We are encouraging the public to report crimes online when possible or to speak to an officer or a public safety support specialist by phone if possible. Um, Community members may also be asked to come outside and speak in an open air environment, Uh, but we are taking all calls for service. We're just trying to limit our uh, one-on-one exposure um, in basically confined spaces if at all possible. Welcome to the Portland Police Bureau's Talking Beat. On this special episode, Chief Jamie Resch answers questions regarding the Police Bureau's response during the COVID-19 outbreak. This is Lieutenant Tina Jones with the Police Bureau, and I'm here with Chief Jamie Resch. Chief Resch, thanks for being here today. I know that you've been busy. How has PPB been preparing for the COVID-19 event? Well, I just wanted to start off by saying um, thank you um, for giving me the opportunity to answer some of these questions. I know that there have been a lot of questions and people have been working very hard to make sure that um, accurate information is out. Um, But just so that you hear directly from me, I thought it was important um, that I answer some of these questions. So your first question, how has PPB been preparing for this COVID-19 event? We have been coordinating with our partners um, for for weeks now, actually our partners inside Multnomah County Health Department, the Bureau of Emergency Communications, Portland's Bureau of Emergency Management, Portland Fire and Rescue, and many others. Um, We are currently um, functioning in a support role right now. We are continually checking in through the law enforcement emergency support function with the Multnomah County Emergency Operations Center. We have established what our incident command structure would look like um, in the event that we would need to mobilize more resources to meet our essential functions. So I do want the community to um, be aware that we are preparing for those types of things. Um, So we won't be um, behind. We're trying to proactively think ahead. Our primary role is to respond to police calls for service and to investigate crimes. And we'll continually triage um, the staffing and the calls for service so that we um, continue to respond to these types of calls for service um, at the highest level possible. I want the community to know that we are currently taking all calls for service. We are encouraging the public to report crimes online when possible or to speak to an officer or a public safety support specialist by phone if possible. Um, Community members may also be asked to come outside and speak in an open air environment, Uh, but we are taking all calls for service. We're just trying to limit our uh, one-on-one exposure um, in basically confined spaces if at all possible. Um, And like I said, we will continue to prioritize our calls as we have been um, and You just might see some of those changes in our response. Thank you, Chief. What does PPB's current staffing level and calls for service look like? So from the very beginning, we have been encouraging all of our employees to stay home if they don't feel well. Um, And that basically is just to protect um, the other members of the Bureau as well as the community. So we've been messaging that um, to our to our members from the very beginning. Um, We put an internal um, incident management team in place on Monday, March 16th. This team has an incident commander and team partners um, who are looking at our logistics, our finance, our communications, our planning. Um, and their, their basically main goal is to focus on PPB's COVID response plan and to manage our resources. Um, we have not seen an increase in the sick leave and the patrol, um, in the patrol division of the Bureau in the last several days, but we continue to monitor it every day. And we do have, um, plans in place should those numbers start to rise and we need to increase our patrol resources. Um, in the past two days, we've been averaging about 2.5 to 3 percent of our total staffing out sick. However, this is pretty consistent with the time of year, um, you know, that people are normally out with other types of colds and flus and stuff. So we have not seen a significant increase as of yet. Um, our total calls for service are down 14.6 percent from last week. However, they are up 6.3% compared to last year this time. So while we greatly appreciate um, the community's um, reply to trying to um, limit the calls for service or do them on uh, line when possible, um, we have seen that and we appreciate that decline. 
Um, we have been trying to anticipate what resources our community members may need um, when folks are asked to stay at home for longer um, amounts of time. It can cause some sorts of, some sort of stressors on people. So we've been trying to um, message out all of the resources available for mental health support, domestic violence support, and we will continue to do that. Um, I think that's it on that one. Chief, are we able to tell at this time the percentage of calls that have maybe a COVID-19 nexus? Um, no, we are not able to tell that at this time. I think people need to understand a lot of the information um, is protected health information, so we may not always know that or we may not have access to that type of information. Okay. So what police practices have changed in the recent past? So um, I think we were one of the first agencies to really take that proactive step of messaging out to our community that you were going to see a difference in some types of response to calls for service. Um, we notified the community as quickly as possible that we would be responding to calls um, like as little as possible in person, um, mainly trying to have folks do it online, like I said, or respond by phone when possible, trying to have community members come outside. Um, we also... Just trying to make sure that I've got all of that right there. Um, I think. So uh, another piece that we did is um, we began to limit the officer's um, involvement in some of the things that we normally do, like community meetings. Um, we discontinued roll calls for officers so that we weren't having them group up um, just before shift. We've closed two of our three precincts to the public, meaning that only central precinct right now is open for um, community members to walk into. Um, and this has actually been very difficult because as I've tried to communicate out we really value the face-to-face -face interactions that we're able to have with the community. But this is not only an effort to try to prevent our members from becoming ill and um, reducing our ability to, rep to respond to calls for service, but we really do not want to be unintentional spreaders of this um, virus by contacting more people than we need to and then unknowingly passing that on. So um, the other thing that we did in conjunction with um, the DA's office is we have reduced the um, folks that we are taking to jail. We are citing all misdemeanor crimes. Basically, the um, people that we are taking to jail are felony custodies and all mandatory arrests, such as domestic violence. So I think that's important for the community to know that we are taking um, felonies and mandatory arrests to jail. So that's been messaged out a couple of times, and I think that's very important. Great. So how is PPB or preparing their staff and how are they protecting their staff during this time? Right. So um, we have been in constant contact with um, the Multnomah County Health to establish what are the appropriate protocols for our personal protective equipment for our members. We've been trying to keep our members continually updated with the most up-to-date and current information. We've been pushing out daily emails. Um, we've been looking for ways to... Um, to increase the amount of personal protective equipment that we have. We've increased the cleaning schedules for our precincts and our workstations. Um, we have gone through and our facilities folks have done an assessment on what supplies we have, what personal protective equipment we have. Um, and we have really tried to educate our employees on how to stop the spread and what precautions to take, social distancing, attempting to handle phone calls or uh, calls online, um, washing your hands with soap and water. We've really been trying to stress that. Um, for those folks in the Bureau who are able to telework, we have been able to um, make that happen with some laptops. Uh, we're also trying to do things like rotate different shifts for some of our professional staff. And I would like to highlight that a lot of our professional staff have become very flexible with their schedules as we've tried to limit how many people are in one workspace at a time. So we may have half a group come in on one day and half of a group come on another. And the Bureau as a whole has been very, very flexible in um, trying to make all of these ar arrangements occur so that we can continue with our um, essential functions. So what protective gear and supplies does PPB have and do you have enough? So we have not changed any of the standard gear that we have um, for the officers. We have communicated internally and externally on social media about the air purifying respirators that you may see the officers respond to certain calls on. Um, they look different, but we've tried to put out some photographs so folks would, would be aware of that if you see an officer. 
Um, and they, all of the officers have already been issued these. So we've had these for a long time. They're, they're trained on how they work um, and the best place to use them. We currently do have um, supplies such as hand sanitizers and disinfecting wipes. However, we are closely monitoring those because we understand that they are in very limited supply and we need to be very mindful of, of how we are using those. Um, and like I said, our facilities folks, that's one of the things that they're monitoring is to ensure that we continue to have that supply. So a lot of uh, our media partners wanted to know if a bureau member has tested has been tested or tested positive for COVID-19. So I am unaware of any bureau members being tested, but again, we're talking about medical information that's protected by HIPAA, and there is no requirement for anybody to notify us if they have been tested. That goes back to um, my direction to all of the members that if you don't feel well to stay home, uh, I am hopeful that if someone does test positive, that they would report that to us so that we could do our best to limit the exposure and take care of our community and our members. Um, there is a notification protocol in place if someone feels that they have been exposed. Um, but again, I am not aware of any member who has been tested or tested positive. So what happens if a PB member does get diagnosed with COVID-19? I think it's important for everybody to know that this is a very real possibility and we are planning for that. Um, I think the key is both internally and externally is really um, not to panic. If someone is diagnosed, it does not mean that everybody in their precinct or their workstation is, is going to come down with COVID-19. We have been uh, planning for this. We have contingencies in place for cleaning, for notification. Um, we would really need to uh, take a moment to assess the situation, determine who would need to be contacted, what level their exposure was, and provide them guidance. Um, at this time, um, we really have to use a common sense approach um, when we come into these types of situations. So there's been a lot of um, questions that came in regarding whether or not PPB is enforcing the governor's restaurant and bar shutdown order. Correct. Um, so PBB is not the regulatory agency for that order. That would be the OLCC. Um, PPB does play a role in if we were to come across maybe a bar or a restaurant that we see is still operating, we would make an attempt to um, work with that location, explain to them, you know, you really do need to close down the importance of this, the social distancing. Um, and then as we become aware of that, we would report that information to OLCC so that they could take the appropriate measures. And our members have a lot of relationships with businesses and bar owners. Correct. Are we doing anything in that regard? Well, I know that the officers um, have been in contact to those who frequent those um, areas, either for calls for service or have those relationships um, built already to ensure that we're doing everything that we can to support them. And this time, I know that I've put out one of our kind of proactive self-initiated steps would be to go around and check on businesses that we know have shut down um, just to make sure that there hasn't been any um, issues with their locations. But again, I think if we were to see that an establishment was open and not following the governor's order, or hopefully those relationships would allow us to work with that business um, to have them follow the appropriate guidelines. So along those lines, what is PPB's role and how a shelter-in-place order would be enforced, and has PPB provided input into a shelter-in-place ban? So we have, um, I have provided input uh, when asked, and as far as PPB's role in determining that, that's not, that is not our uh, determination. However, if a determination like that or something similar were made, um, we would do our part as far as communicating with the public, doing our best to message out what that meant, um, doing our best to support our community members who may need assistance during that time. But we have to understand that this is um, a fluid event and we must uh, remain flexible in our decision making and our resource development. And that's where PPB really comes into play during these types of events. So what advice would you have for the public um, if one of those things happens or regarding, you know, going back to the restaurant and bar um, shutdown direction from the governor? 
So if uh, community members are seeing that locations are not um, complying with these types of things, I do encourage them to call non-emergency so that the police bureau has the opportunity to go and to talk to those folks and explain to them the importance of uh, following the guidelines and how really it's not just to protect those people, it's to protect our entire community. And people may unknowingly spread this. A lot of people don't have symptoms. And so just because you're not feeling um, not not just because you're not feeling well or you're feeling fine doesn't mean that you you don't you aren't at risk to the rest of the public. So I would encourage um, them to um, contact non-emergency if possible. I would also encourage everyone to read all of the um, the directions that are given um, either by the city, the county, or the state, so that you fully understand um, and comply with all of the expectations. Thank you. So we had some questions about, you know, what should someone do if they're in a home with someone who is violent or abusive, and when community members should call 911? So again, um, like I wanted to say, we are responding to all calls for service. So if you at any time feel that your life is in danger or if violence is happening in your home, we encourage you to call 911 and the police bureau will respond. Um, we have tried to push out um, additional information on our social media pages and on our web page for um, national domestic violence hotlines, mental health hotlines, as much information as we can to try to assist people. But I do really want to stress if at any time you feel your life is in danger to call 911 and the police will respond. So we are headed into what is commonly referred to as protest season. What is PPB's plan for keeping public order? So um, as many folks know, we have a lot of experiencing um, experience managing public public order events and, uh, and different types of incidents. And um, while this pandemic presents a unique circumstances and it's difficult to say exactly how we're going to approach everything. Um, I am very confident in our team's ability to manage the events as they arise, um, just because we have a lot of experience doing so. So Chief, what do you think is important for the public to know? I think it's important um, for the public to know that our officers and our essential staff continue to show up every day to provide public safety to Portland's communities. Uh, many of our members are also juggling families, including kids that are out of school, ill family members, or other needs and stresses that the community is also trying to navigate. Um, but I am very proud of their dedication to duty and to service and will continue to support them in any way possible. Um, we will continue to work in partnership with the Emergency Operations Center as this situation develops to manage the resources and the community needs to, best, to the best of our abilities. So thank you, Chief. Uh, I think we have a few minutes for uh, some additional questions in case we didn't touch on okay. you know, what we had. So I will go ahead and um, change the volume. And I know there are a lot of you on the call, so um, we'll try and figure out the best way to make this happen. Does anyone have an additional question for the chief? I do. This is okay. <laughs> All right, how about this? Why don't I just call out uh, an outlet just randomly, and then we'll see if you have a question, and we'll just try and go through the list. I think we should have enough time. So um, is KGW online, and do you have a question? Sure, I do. Thanks a lot. This is Tim Gordon at KGW. So I'm curious, you mentioned, you know, contacting bars and restaurants if they're not following the rules. I'm wondering, are any of them out there not following the rules? Have you had this experience where you've had to go to bars and say, You're, you shouldn't be open, you need to close? And I'd also ask about the demonstration season. Are you also encouraging demonstrations not to happen right now? We know you have experience in dealing with them, but is there a message there for those who might come into demonstration season? So I ask two questions. Sure. I am not personally aware of us having to do that as far as go to a bar and ask them to, you know, stop serving or anything like that. Um, but it would be something that, that we would do if we were made aware of that. We've been asked the question several times, so that's why I answered that. But I personally have not been aware of any bar or restaurant that's not following the guidelines provided. As far as... Um, We'll come back to the second question at the end if okay. it didn't come up before, just okay. to keep it fair. Um, do we have someone from KXL here? Yeah, just once again, uh, Chief, would like to know what exactly uh, you're doing as far as prioritizing calls for public peace during this situation. I'm as sorry, far as prioritizing calls for what? 
Was that prioritizing for calls for service? Prioritizing calls from the community of what, what gets most attention from you right now. So we haven't changed any of our prior our priority calls. So our priority our prioritization stays the same. Um, obviously, all um, life safety calls come first, and then it's so our priority calls are exactly the same. We are taking all calls for service; they just may be handled in a different manner. And do we have someone from Portland Tribune with a question? Thank you. No question. Okay, if you think of one at the end. Um, Coin, do we have someone from Coin? Uh, Justin Burton, uh, Assistant News Director with Coin. I guess um, you had had mentioned this in parts, but essentially what's your message to folks who are worried that there will not be enough officers uh, on staff to respond to emergencies? So what we've done so far is our operations um, has remained the same, all of the people that you normally see out in uniform taking 911 calls. What we've also done is told all of the officers who don't normally work the street, all of those who work our support units, our investigative branch and everything, they are to be 100% prepared to deploy to operations if needed. So um, we are basically making sure that every sworn member who is able um, to go out and take calls is prepared to do so if they need to be. We will also work with our other law enforcement partners around the county and um, and different cities if need be so that we can we can use each other as resources should something hit multiple agencies at a time so we are all working together and these are all contingencies that we're trying to plan for thank you mm-hmm. do we have someone from Willamette week with a question uh, yeah I had a follow-up question on the um, demonstration part one um, if COVID-19 is still a big issue during protest season, would you consider um, banning protests altogether? Well, I don't know that I would actually, I mean, there's different orders that come from different levels. So as far as the state and the county, and we would all have to abide by that. And depending on what those orders are, would dictate, um, you know, what authority the, the Portland Police Bureau would have. Obviously, if we are still in the situation that we are in right now, I would highly encourage no gatherings at this point, just because of the the um, possibility of spreading it unknowingly. Um, any direction on whether or not to demonstrate um, would have to be decided by the state or city level. Do we have someone from the Oregonian with a question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, you mentioned, I wanted to check the 14.6% of total calls for service. Is that down since when? That's down. I think we're doing week by week, but let me double check. And also, wondered if officers have access to the N95 masks. Or is that something that's provided? And what are, with the roll calls that are canceled, how are officers, how's information getting out to officers? So our calls were, are down 14.6% from last week. However, if you look at this same week last year, we're up 6.3%. So it's down. Uh, you know, but still up a little bit. The uh, when I speak about officers showing up looking differently, that's the gas masks that I'm referring to. That's the N95 masks. The um, yeah, that you'll commonly hear them referred to as that. Thank you. Do we have someone from K2 with a question? I'm not hearing anybody. We'll come back and double check. I know people are trying to get probably unmuted. Do we have someone from Portland Mercury? Yeah, this is uh, Alex here. I'm curious if you could just speak a little bit more about um, your decision or the the decision to, to only cite misdemeanor crimes. Um, what does that look like in, in practice? I mean, the citation just kind of scheduled court hearing for the indefinite future, a fee. Um, are those being treated differently at all within the, the range of misdemeanor crimes? So uh, that decision was made in conjunction with the district attorney's office, and I think probably referring to them for more specifics on how the citations will be handled um, is more appropriate. But I can answer just like from the officer level, it's a it's what's referred to as a criminal citation. So instead of someone going to jail, if we're able to verify their identity, 
then an officer would issue, it, it's similar to like a traffic citation, except it's a crime, not a violation. So they would be given a court date, and then that would be up to the district attorney's office as far as the follow through. We, the officers would still write and submit their reports. And really, it's, you know, part of the efforts to mitigate the number, the volume of folks who are currently in jail, um, and also due to the staffing at, you know, the courts and um, with the district attorneys, their ability to process those sorts of things as well. Do we have somebody from KPTV? Yes, hi, this is Brenna with KPTV. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but it, Mayor Wheeler is obviously drafting an order um, for shelter in place. And, oh, can you still hear me? Yep. Yes, I think someone just hung up. That's okay. Yeah, just what direction does he have for PPV right now? I mean, obviously, um, when that comes down, you'll go forward with it. But you're in talks, I'm sure, about what would happen if um, this is to come down. How will PPB respond, I guess, is my question. So obviously, I am um, always in communication with the mayor's office, but um, as that as direction is given, um, then I will be messaging out what PPB's response is. Because I don't have um, what what the message is going to be, it, it would be inappropriate for me to, to comment on that. I think like the chief you mentioned earlier, you know, this is a very fluid time, and so as we get information and the chief and the chief's office um, works with the IMT to, to figure out resources and direction and then the communications team has been working hard to both keep internal and our external partners um, informed and so if there's direction given then we would certainly be um, relaying that information externally um, as you know, we get it and figure out what our direction is. So, right. And just to emphasize what Lieutenant Jones was saying, any direction that's given um, would be followed by a very large communication piece by the Bureau so that the community members are well aware of what the direction is and exactly what our response would be. Thank you, Chief. So I think I we got to everybody. Was there anybody who got missed inadvertently? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Lincoln at K2. So I was on mute. Oh, no problem. We'll circle back. Thanks, Lincoln. Yeah, so I wanted to, I mean, I think most of us realize not only are you guys police officers, you're mental health officers, at least in an unofficial capacity. And something like this, even though we're in the early stages, it's obviously making everybody out there anxious. Have you guys noticed any um, difference in the types of, uh, you know, mental health calls that you're dealing with? And are you anticipating doing anything differently in that area um, in terms of dealing with all of this? Uh, no, we're not uh, anticipating doing anything different. Um, as far as, you know, like I said earlier, we're trying to message out all of the resources available to the communities as much as we can so that as folks are experiencing more things or um, having more pressures or stresses applied to them daily, that we are in constant communication and trying to resource out everything that's available to them. I mean, you know, our ECT ECIT officers are still out there. We're still taking the calls um, exactly the same. And just kind of a side note, um, just I think for your, all of your awareness too, I mean, as we think of like our different divisions, such as our records division and our strategic services division, which includes a lot of our analysts, all of our different divisions are being impacted by this. And so it is slowing down some of our processes. So at this point in time, we don't have some of the detailed breakdowns, but we are hoping to get some of that. Um, and as we have that, you know, we would be trying to help push that out and communicate that to you. So it is something that we'll be looking into. Can you say whether the training is training still going on or is that... Our in-service training for now has been canceled. So we're, we're doing as much as we can of it um, uh, online. So some of the some of the classroom stuff, just the uh, classroom portions um, that were videoed, we're showing officers that online as they're available. And then we'll have to work in the actual, actual practical pieces of in-service uh, when we can. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Talking Beat. Do you have a question for us? You can call and leave us a message on our dedicated voicemail line at 971-339-8868. Or send us an email to talkingbeat at portlandoregon.gov. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. More episodes can be found at our website, portlandoregon.gov slash police slash podcast. <laughs>